Hello everyone, welcome back to Gentlesign. Today we are here with a new video on Leukoplakia, which is an important exam question. We are going to cover this topic in the following headings. Introduction, Definition and Terminology, Etiology and Epidemiology, Clinical Features and Clinical Presentation, Histopathology and Staging System, and finally the Diagnosis, Differential Diagnosis and Treatment of Leukoplakia. Before we begin, I want you to subscribe to Gentlesign, also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So, first come to Introduction. Leukoplakia. Leuko means white, plakia means patch. So, this white patch can be seen only in the mouth clinically so leukoplakia term is used only exclusively to clinical context by excluding other diseases that is other lesions which show white areas that should be excluded and then only the term leukoplakia should be used so leukoplakia is a clinical entity that is very very important point about leukoplakia so other lesions which should be excluded are lichen planus chronic cheek bite frictional keratosis tobacco induced keratosis leukoedema and white sponge nevus so leukoplakia denotes a negative diagnosis that is another important point about leukoplakia because its diagnosis is based on exclusion criteria. जब हम बाकी सारी diseases को exclude कर देते हैं, उसके बाद हम leukoplakia का diagnosis देते हैं और that too clinically. So when this white patch is then removed and taken for biopsy, then the diagnosis is changed. That is, term leukoplakia should be replaced with the diagnosis which is established histopathologically, and that becomes the final diagnosis. Now, here comes a question that what does leukoplakia denote? Leukoplakia kya denote kar raha hai? Kyu ban raha hai? It means mucosa is irritated. Something is irritating the mucosa, mechanical, chemical or galvanic means. And mucosa is trying to adapt to it by producing more keratin on its surface. So, why it appears white? That is very very important by our question. Because it is hyperkeratotic. Because it is very much keratin. Hai. So wetting of this keratin in contact with saliva gives it white appearance. So keratin plus saliva gives white color and because leukoplakia is hyperkeratotic, it will give white color. Now we come to the definition of leukoplakia. WHO in 1978 defined it as a white patch or plaque that cannot be characterized clinically or pathologically as any other disease. Then in first international conference in Sweden in 1984 on oral leukoplakia, a phrase was added to this definition and that was and it is not associated with any physical or chemical causative agent except the use of tobacco because tobacco smoking is commonly seen in leukoplakia. So this phrase was added to the definition. Then WHO in 1997 defined it as a predominantly white lesion of the oral mucosa that cannot be characterized as any other definable lesion. So the term disease in earlier definition was replaced with lesion. Other definition which is given is by Exilti in 1996, a predominantly white lesion of the oral mucosa that cannot be characterized as any other definable lesion. Some oral leukoplakia will transform into cancer. Then WHO in 2005 redefined it as a white plaque of questionable risk because its risk is questionable whether it can transform into malignancy or not, having excluded other non-diseases or disorders that carry no increased risk for cancer. Now let's see what are the other white definable lesions. Hyperplastic candidiasis, hairy leukoplakia, tobacco-induced white lesions, tobacco-associated leukoplakia and idiopathic leukoplakia. Now we come to the etiology or causes. Most common tobacco, smoking, smoke contains nicotine, polycyclic hydrocarbons, nitrosamines. Then use of alcohol has a synergistic action. When alcohol is consumed along with the tobacco, then it produce, can produce leukoplakia. Then candida albicans, viral agents, human papillomavirus strain 16 and 18, syphilis, a bacterial disease. People who have nutritional deficiency like vitamin A, B12, C, beta carotene, folic acid can develop leukoplakia. Calvinism, sanguinarin, a herbal extract used in toothpaste. So people who take those toothpaste can develop leukoplakia. UV radiation and idiopathic where the cause is not known. Now we come to the epidemiology. There is a significant geographical variation about leukoplakia and it is influenced by etiological factors. But it is seen that estimated prevalence is 2.6% in global terms and in developed countries it is 3%. Next we come to the clinical features. Age of onset is more than 30 years and peak is more than 50 years of age. Gender distribution, males are more commonly affected than females. Strong male predominance in different parts in India to almost 1 is to 1 ratio in the West. Now we come to the site. Most of these lesions are seen in buccal mucosa, mammalian border of lower lip and gingiva. Less common sites are palate, maxillary mucosa, floor of the mouth and tongue. But the lesions which are seen on tongue and floor of the mouth, they account for most of the cases that show dysplasia or carcinoma. So here the malignant transformation hone ke chances sabse zyada hai. Next, we come to the clinical presentation. When leukoplakia start, it begins as a mild lesion and that is sometimes termed as 
pre-leukoplakia. It is a low-grade or mild reaction of the oral mucosa to irritant. It appears as grey or greyish white area and never completely white, with a slightly lobular pattern and indistinct borders blending with the normal mucosa. And as it grows, it can change its appearance. So WHO in 1980 gave a clinical classification based on the color and texture of the lesion. It can be homogeneous when the lesions are uniformly white. And it can be smooth, furrowed or ulcerated. And it is said to be non-homogeneous when the lesions in which the part is white and the rest appears reddened. Nodular speckle is used when demarcated traced white areas interspersed with reddened areas are seen. And sometimes the term erythroleukoplakia is also used, that is both red and white areas can be seen. So that is important clinical types and clinical classification and it is a common viva question. That is homogeneous and non-homogeneous. -hom non Another type which is given is proliferative varicose leukoplakia. Now let's see what is this PVL. It was first given by Hansen et al. in 1984. Now it is an aggressive form. And that to idiopathic, where the cause is not known, recalcitrant, and strong potential for malignant transformation. So it has considerable morbidity. WHO in 2005 defined it as a rare but distinctive high risk clinical form of oral precursor lesion. Some important points about BVL it is seen in non smokers, more in elderly females, male is to female ratio is 1 is to 4, most frequently involved side gingiva, buccal mucosa, and tongue. Then it starts as one area, it starts in one area but progresses from one area to become multifocal areas with appearance which is exophytic or what like. That's why the term verrucous is used and it is refractory to treatment. Now we come to the histopathology of leukoplakia. So when we take the biopsy of this white patch, we can see different things. So features are non-specific and they can range from hyperkeratosis, epithelial dysplasia, carcinoma in C2 and squamous cell carcinoma. So we can see any of these four things in histopathology. So here in histopathology, you have to write 13 features of epithelial dysplasia for which you can see other video on epithelial dysplasia. For that, you can tap on the I button above. So once we do histopath, we have to do we have to mention two things, presence or absence of dysplasia, whether dysplasia is there or not. And if it is there, what is its grade? That is mild, moderate or severe. That also you can find in the video on oral epithelial dysplasia. Next, we come to the OLEP staging system for leukoplakia. OL refers to oral leukoplakia, EP, epithelial pathology. So here we use two factors. First is L, that is size of the leukoplakia. Clinically, it can be less than 2 cm, then we call it L1. L2 when it is between 2 to 4 cm, L3 when size is more than 4 cm and LX when size is not specified. P, presence of pathology, whether we see dysplasia in histopath or not. So P0 if no epithelial dysplasia, P1 if distinct epithelial dysplasia and Px, dysplasia is not specified in the pathology report. So based on the L and the P, we give four stages. Stage 1, we have L1 P0, stage 2 L2 P0, stage 3 L3 P0 or L1 L2 P1 and stage 4, 4 L3 P1. Now we come to the diagnosis of leukoplakia. Now elimination of the possible cause can give us the diagnosis by ruling out any other definable white lesion. Second thing is biopsy. Taking a biopsy in homogeneous leukoplakia should be the standard rule and that too should be taken from the most representative side where we can see symptoms if present and or at the site of redness or induration hardness. Then other things which can be used in diagnosis are toluidine blue staining, leukose iodine staining and exfoliative cytology. Other potential diagnostic aids are fluorescent imaging, optical spectroscopy, chemiluminescence, brush biopsy and confocal microscopy and tomography. Now we come to the differential diagnosis. Other diseases which can look similar to leukoplakia. These are white sponge universe, frictional keratosis, cheek bite, acute pseudomembranous candidiasis, lichen planus. Now we come to the treatment of leukoplakia. We have to eliminate the cause that is tobacco. Cessation of habit is important. We have to advise the patient to quit tobacco. And if we find moderate or severe dysplasia in biopsy, then we have to undergo surgical excision for the lesion. It can be done with cryosurgery, carbon dioxide laser surgery, electrocauterization. Then we can use chemotherapy, which can include retinoids, vitamin A therapy, antioxidants, beta carotene and isotretinoin supplements. Photodynamic therapy can be given. And if it displays is not there, we can just ask the patient to quit habit and we can do follow-up. Regular follow-up is very important even after the surgical excision to look for any recurrences of leukoplakia. 
So that is all for this video. If you really like the video, tap on the like button. Keep sharing. Keep growing. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.